Imagine a disaster situation into which it's too dangerous for humans to venture. What if, rather than risking human lives, robots were sent in instead? Dr. Daniel Goldman and his team of researchers at Georgia Tech think this could be a possibility, but first, they're trying to answer a few fundamental questions about robot locomotion over complex terrain. So in our lab here in the School of Physics at Georgia Tech, uh, we're interested in locomotion, movement of animals and models of animals, robots, over a variety of complicated terrain. And one of our favorite terrains is uh, sand or granular material, which presents interesting challenges because it can behave like a solid or a fluid underneath a footstep. And the best way to walk or crawl or run on these materials is currently unknown. To improve the performance of robots on tricky surfaces like sand, Goldman's lab, also known as the Crab Lab or the Complex Rheology and Biomechanics Lab, is exploring and testing basic principles of locomotion on granular media. In order to study how the properties of sand affect movement, three projects in the lab are using robots. The projects that Jeff Aguilar, Mark Kingsbury, and Fei Fei Chen are interested in are what's good ways or bad ways to, to move on the surface of these materials that can act like fluids or solids. In Mark's case, he is looking at a long-legged robot. We want to be able to change the, the size of the foot how the, uh, of the robot. We want to be able to change the properties of the ground. We want to be able to change how it steps and walks and change its kinematics and see how this all influences how it moves and how effectively it moves and, and how, how hard it is for it to move that way. And so in order to do that, we have this kind of machine that controls the machine. And so the robot will be pulled along this linear air bearing system to be set back in the same spot to then to be uh, set down after that, after the bed is uh, fluidized beneath it. The fluidization process uses airflow to change the compaction of the bed, and it resets after each experiment to allow for multiple runs. Another topic of interest for the Crab Lab, the effect of natural terrain composed of particles of different shapes and sizes on robot locomotion. In Feifei's experiment, we have a nice apparatus which basically takes her robot and controls where it starts and controls the kind of ground that it runs upon, taking boulders and putting them at arbitrary locations in front of it or to the side of it, and then we can watch how her robot negotiates these kind of terrain. If we want the robot to go from A and B and there are certain rocks and boulders in the way, then with our study we will be able to know interaction with uh, with the rock will create what sort of attractive or repulsive potential. So basically turn the robot away from the rock or attract it to the rock. PhD student Jeffrey Aguilar has taken his research in a slightly different direction, vertically. He's using robots to study the jumping aspect of locomotion. When you're in close pack sand, you essentially jump higher. And so really the challenge was to figure out a way to jump better when you're in loose pack sands. Uh, and we found that you can do a stutter jump and a single jump at their optimal parameters and they'll get you to the same jump height in loose sand, very poor. But if you take that stutter jump and you sort of split it up into two different movements and add a delay between your sort of pull up phase, your initial hop, and then your push off phase, then you're able to sort of locally compact the sand and then that produces jump heights that are comparable to close pack sand, which is closer to hard ground, which is essentially what you want. I think that one of the most interesting things we found in these locomotion problems is just how sensitive the locomotion performance is to, to small changes in how the limbs move as a function of time. Jeff's project is a great example of that. Small changes in how he thrusts the foot down into the sand can lead to very large changes in, in the height that the robot jumps off the ground. Goldman says that if the principles behind these diverse movements are uncovered, roboticists can then make use of them to design robots that are better prepared to traverse all different types of terrains, from disaster areas to the surface of Mars. But the Crab Lab is not done asking questions just yet. As far as science goes, there's always more to do, there's always other questions you can do and other ways to ask it. So right now I'm having it walk over uh, flat granular media, but what happens if it has to start walking on an incline? Or what happens if it has to 
deal with other sorts of problems as well. And these are all things that I can study and investigate with this room.